Yeah, it's bad. It's really, it's probably everything that's bad about the internet all in one place. Yep. But also, yes, I love Darkest Dungeon, as uh, the guys in chat are saying. <laughs> I love I love management. Darkest Dungeon is one of my favorite games of all time. Have you ever played it? Yeah, I Man. played it when it first came out a long time ago. You remember our venerable house, Opera at Imperial? I love the narrator. Yeah. There. <laughs> I I played it when it first came out, and I'll be honest, it was one of those games that it was so brow beating that it's a good game. It just after a while, I was like, I I can't handle this anymore. Like, I just got to take a break, and I haven't played it since. It is a tough game. It will punish you really freaking hard. Even when you don't make mistakes, it will still punish you, just because it feels like it. I I, I love it. Hello, paint. Painting. I How love you doing? the art style, too. Holy Dude, crap. Yeah. Oh, wait. I, I have something to show you. Ah, there we go. I, I got this guy from Etsy. And I painted it oh. in the Darkest Dungeon style. Yeah, it's Dismas from the game. I love that. That's great. Yeah, I love. I actually awesome. love painting in this style. It's so fun too. If you guys want to, one of these days, I could do. I could do a little tutorial on how I paint. Maybe for uh, for the Reapercon thingy. I don't know. If we end up doing that, I could do it. Awesome. Okay, so we're doing good progress here. Uh, Everything will need a lot of refinement as we go, but for now I'm just blocking in things, getting myself to to know the model a bit more. Uh, I probably want the uh, the blues to be darker. I don't want them to be so vibrant, especially in the bottom. So I'm just gonna take them down a notch, glazing some of these uh, dark violet. Let me thin this a bit more. Okay, towards the bottom. I'm gonna be killing some of the highlights, it's not a problem, I can always pick them up if needed to. But I would like to bring some more uh, some more focus towards the chest and the face. So let's let's take down these highlights a little bit. You can use light to 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 push the focus the focal point as I was saying earlier. And at the same time shadows will help you with that as well. Yeah, Reaper Dragons are amazing, dude. Do I still have trunks? I do, actually. I I don't want to show too many models that are in Reaper because I feel awful doing so. It's, I, it's, I, really, it's okay, seriously. If you want to, you feel far, free, feel free to do so. It's okay. It showcases your your ability and your talent, so that's. I I I, I would love never to never complain. I would love to showcase it on on your models though. Uh, do I have a black actually? Yes, I do. Pure black from Reaper. Let's go. Shouldn't you be in bed, sir? No, it's uh it's eleven p.m. It's not very late. How you doing, Josh? This is this is the trunks the guys were talking about. Uh, this is my anniversary gift for my girlfriend. Actually, she loves trunks from Dragon Ball, and I I I got an action figure and I repainted it to match the anime style. I don't know how well you can see it. That's that's fantastic. I love that. But this is the cell shaded style. Zoom in on the face. Uh, sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. The cell shaded. Looks okay. so good. Yeah, I, I actually like Borderlands for that reason because it's just that art style is. is there's something about it. probably it's the, maybe it's the vibrancy of colors within that that I like so much because it's it the contrast. Colors. It's not the vibrancy. It's the contrast. Oh, it's Everything contrast, has a black sure. line. Everything has a black line around. It's like stuff is is uh, encased in black, and that black that creates a silhouette around every detail creates an immense amount of contrast. The colors are vibrant, yes, but what really makes it set out, uh, be different is the strong contrast you have in every detail.
Thank you, guys. My obsession caused this great foulness, and it is shameful that I must rely upon you to set it right. <laughs> Trinkets and bubbles, paid for in blood. Sorry, I'm just quoting Darkest Dungeon. Damn you, Kiwi. Okay. Okay, let's try to give it a touch more light to this tail. It's gonna make a mix, a quick Naples yellow, and just boom, highlight. So I would assume that these uh, these straps he has here, I would make them in leather just to break the model a bit apart. So I'm just gonna leave them teal for now, but I'm gonna change the color later on when we get to it. By the way, guys, really, uh, it's important that, uh, I don't know, if the show comes to fruition, it is very important to have your feedback on what you want to see. Because the cool thing, the cool thing that separates this stream from... Uh, my normal stream is that I'm not working on commissions here, which means you guys get to choose what you see rather than the client. So if you want to see specific models, if you want to see specific things, techniques, stuff like that, feel free to ask because uh, if Justin knows about it, he will be able to provide me with it and uh, I can I can paint it for you. Like if there are models you really love. Uh, one thing that could be cool, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, like I thought it was cool, but maybe it isn't. I don't, I'm just gonna throw out the idea. Would be nice if I painted the Reaper challenge model. What do you think? Hmm, I like the idea. But I, I, I wouldn't compete with it, of course. I would paint it maybe after the challenge. Uh, I don't know. That could be cool. You could paint it concurrently and just have it be something that... You're referring to the, the quarterly paint contest, right? Yes. Um, yeah, you could you could paint it concurrently, and that way, you know, during that month, or I'm sorry, during that quarter, whatever, however long it takes for you to paint it, um, people could stop in to kind of see what your, I say submission, but I mean, you could submit it if you wanted to, but it could be one of the... All right, woof. Hey guys, I overnapped. <laughs> I'm gonna actually take this out of my ear since I don't have to have it anymore. I was trying not to bug David. Woo, yeah, so my nap that was supposed to be like, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes went like 45 minutes because I was uh, so sleepy that I set my alarm an hour later than I thought. Oops. Hey everybody. Yeah, David actually fled, I think, to do a meeting. Um, he just ran out. Uh, but yeah, yeah, oops, I overnapped. So I'm terrifically sluggish because <laughs> you know, right, when you nap. Power nap is all very well, but the power nap cannot go beyond like 25 minutes, I think is the limit. Uh, and when it does, you're like, you're like groggy. So I've gone, I'm no longer exhausted, so that's good. But I definitely have a little groggy, groggy disoriented going on. So, uh, so Lucas stream looked like it was going well. Yes? Hey, half it, hey, half it, do we have everybody? You never was able to get power nap work for you? Yeah. I had to work with it. Like, it, I used to think that I could only, like, take a one or two hour nap, and only if I was sick, Coops. But then I was, um, 
I think it was it was reading a book um, that was talking about some studies on sleep and how how good the power nap is for you. Um, and I just uh, there were definitely there uh, there is definitely a time in the afternoon. Let me make sure I've got my AC on here. Oh no, are you working AC? It's thinking about it. All right, maybe we'll see if it's working. But, um, there was a time where, where there's a time in the afternoon where I typically feel really sluggish and really low energy. So I thought, well, if power naps can help me get around that. I'll do it. So I just, uh, started kind of training myself. I'd set my alarm, uh, and I, yeah, it's weird, but I find a 10 or 15 minute nap is really, really good in the middle of the day. Good afternoon, everybody. Luca being Luca. He's a really nice guy though. I, I like his, I like his, uh, style. I like uh, the way he tackles stuff, actually. He's very European, but he seems very laid back European. I know so many like European painters who are who are more like, I don't know, more like my way or the highway, you know. <laughs> yeah, 15 minute naps every four hours for days at a time. Yeah, I remember that. I remember hearing that actually at Daphne in college when I was in art school. Um, I probably won't go longer than 90 minutes, Francis, especially since I feel so sluggish. I definitely wanted to get the stream in because I got to get seven separate streams in in order to get affiliate. So today's stream is very important because it's number five. It means that we can finish, uh, finish our affiliate next week. Um, but yeah, I probably won't be going too long. Yeah, yeah. So, oh yeah, oh, B12, vitamin D, B12. That sounds a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I take, um... I, self, I take some vitamins in the morning, usually, but it's multivitamin. Vitamin D usually helps, but there's always, for everybody, there's a time of the day that their system just naturally kind of goes and goes into a bit of a slump. And, and for a lot of people, like, it's you're up in the morning, and maybe you get a little bit up more after lunch, and then you kind of go down a bit, and then after six, you, you slide back up. Apparently, it doesn't have anything to do with the nine to five work day, which originally was my first thought. I'm like, of course you feel better after six. You go home and you get to do fun stuff. But uh, apparently, the sleep studies uh, say that it's, it's more than that. It's not just um, that you get to go home and have fun. Uh, Hey, hello, D. Clearman. Hey, Liquid Nebula. So I was looking at this model, and I think the first thing I've got to do is really pin the arm on here because it's actually, this is the arm. Let me go down and get to my uh, my actual live scene here. Wee, there we are. So I uh, have the arm here, and uh, I realized that I thought it was more to the side, but it's actually a little bit more to her front. So I really need to worry about the positioning then of the shield on it and the positioning relative to her and the horse. And I'm wondering if I'm going to have enough room for it. Um, I think I will, but I wanted to see it because I might not, I might, if I did this, I might have to actually hang it off of her hip or something, um, which wouldn't be thrilling, but it would be an answer either, either way. I want to pin her arm. I may actually need to repose it a little bit. Uh, if I want this shield on it. So to, to kind of dry fit everything, it's useful to pin things. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? 51. Right. There we are. We got to get our, our 0.51 millimeter to go with our appropriate drill bit. Where is my uh, pin vise? There it is. Hey, Karniko. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed Luca. It's very nice that Luca like uh, wanted to focus on Reaper stuff. It's, it's also cool that he's... Uh, that the stream he does for this, uh, for us, won't be, like, commission work. Like, it's uh, apparently his other stream is all just commissions, which I get. Uh, I mentioned to you guys, I think, that this stream helps me to, uh, hmm, this is going to be interesting. Uh, this stream helps me to focus sometimes and get through projects, and that's kind of fun. Okay, so this is interesting because in pinning this, I'm forced to adopt a particular angle because I have to be able to pin it around the knee here, and there's not a way... To get, see, there's not a way to go straight into that socket. The leg is in the way. So I'm going to have to do it obliquely. And I have to kind of judge whether I want it, want to go at it this way or that way. Like, which angle is going to be better? So I'm going to look at this and I'm going to say, all right. So if I want, if I do decide that I want to swing this arm out a bit, what is going to be the better angle for a wire? Here, pin vice. Sit, sit, pin vice. Stay. 
All right, so if it goes in like that, and if I want to swing it or I want to pull it out, I might need to clip off that bottom armor plate if I want to really swivel it. But I think if I am going to swivel it, I think... Wow, there's like... There's a definite socket there where it wants to sit in. If I want to do a conversion on this, it's going to mean some... Going to mean some serious... Not, not any more serious than we don't want the horse, but it is going to mean some serious putty work. Because I'm going to have to shave off the back side of this and rotate the arm out. Hmm. And I think if I want that, I think I want it to be pinned over here. So I'm going to go here. And the reason I say that is because when I, um, when I rotate this arm out, when I, when I think about changing its position and rotating it more to the side, what I see is the whole arm rotates away from, away from this area and it more pivots back here. Um, and I can control that a little bit when I'm, uh, you know, working and, and essentially taking off a lot of this metal up on this socket joint. But it means I probably, the arm isn't going to want to sit nicely flush up on this side. It's probably going to want to sit more over here. So I will take this, this angle then, and I'll pr probably uh, aim it to be out a little bit. And I'm going to drill a hole here. And you know what? If, if it doesn't work out, I can probably uh, fix it. So this could be uh, this could be an interesting project. <laughs> you get more work done. Yeah, it helps you stay focused since people are actually eager to watch the progress, right? Yeah, Liquid Nebula, exactly. So uh, this is my own project, the horse guy, since I stream for Reaper all the time and I just do, you know, Reaper models on stream. And I just do a bunch of different Reaper models so that I could talk about a lot of different techniques and a lot of different colors depending on what, you know, what I've got, what I've ordered. I try to order a lot of the Bones Black when it comes out because I like the Bones Black, but I also have a bunch of metal models that I like, uh, like the Snake Lady I've been working on. All right, I want a couple of millimeters in there, and I probably want a little bit extra because I'm probably reposing this arm. So I want a little bit more room for the wire. I may need to do some re-sculpting for this conversion. Oh, noes. It happens. Oh, oh, got a little bit caught. When it gets a little bit caught, don't panic. Kind of try to wiggle your bit back and forth until it comes out. If you pull too hard, you're going to break the bit off in the hole. And make sure after that happens that you kind of tighten up your vise a little bit to make sure that your bit isn't going to slip when you go back into the hole to clear out some of those threads. Oh, oh no, did my dog get locked out? One second, guys, this is an emergency. Kiri followed David, and now she's like, Mama, you want to come in, dog? Kiri, come in. Oh, there we are. Oh, she was like, squeak, squeak for the people. Yeah, get it. Get the ball. Get the ball. Squeak for the peeps. Squeak. Where's your ball? She's not going to squeak for you. I thought I could get her to squeak for you, everybody. Squeak your ball. Where's your ball? Get it. Get it. Yay! That's Kiri saying hello. Good girl. That was a catastrophe. The doglet was outside of the room. <laughs> Good squeak. Good girl. Good girl, Kiri. Come settle. Come here. <sighs> She's so funny. What? I let you in so you can hang out with me. Now why are you over by the door? <laughs> Dog. Silly dog. And, uh, yes, a pupper emergency of the, of the different kind, right? Because usually it's the, oh, my God, I've got to rush the dog outside. Hi, pretty. Come here. Where's my girl? There's my girl. Hi, face. How you doing, happy face? Good girl. Yay. Why'd you follow David? She's like, he was doing something interesting. While you're in the middle of a work meeting, my mic wasn't muted. Yeah, it's happened to David, Coops. Because I come in to do something in here and she'll get excited that I'm coming into this room because she loves this room. It's like her den. Um, probably because we both sit so close together and then it's cozy and she has her spot too. So I think that's why she likes this room. But, uh, but yeah, so she was squeaking her in one of David's like Google meetings. So I'm like, oops. <laughs> uh, yeah, squeaky ball for the win. She does love her squeaky ball. She's always loved squeaky balls. It's one of, it's the Kiri toy. All right. So now I have to kind of look at this sucker and I got to ask myself, all right, Anne, you've got that. 
But now you have to kind of think about where your wire needs to be. And I think it's going to be a little bit, hmm, I think a little bit off kilter. And I think maybe a little bit, I'm kind of thinking, just looking, and I have to eyeball, this is a hard one, right? Because you're changing the position of everything. You haven't cut anything yet, but you want to kind of get something close. And so I'm looking at where I drilled it. I'm looking at how I'm likely to angle the arm a little bit to get it out. And I'm probably going to actually turn the arm out like this a bit and angle it. And so I've got to probably drill right into kind of the top side of this sucker, that little, uh, that little area. And I think I'm probably going to have to flatten it to do so because obviously when you've got here, let me get this close and get it in focus, in focus. All right. So when you've got this little arm and you need to, need to, to rotate it out, right? So I've got to get this pin kind of coming out of this area here. And since it's a small area and it's convex, it's really hard to seat uh, the drill bit in there without it slipping. And so I may, one, one tactic is to actually slice it off so it's flat and then drill down into it because you don't need this nubbin anymore, right? Um, and the other option is to just try to drill into it normally. I think I'm going to try to slice it a little bit off. You could also use a file. A flat file would work pretty well for this um, to uh, just kind of take it down to more of a level surface so that you can pin into it a little better. Let me see. Ah, oh, that's a nice flat file. Big flat diamond file. And uh, just kind of flatten a part of it. Making it flat is gonna make it easier. You just need a little bit, really. Yeah, yeah, working from home. Yes, which is actually, I got to say, when David finally goes back to work, I'm going to miss him. Like, he's been home, working from home, ever since I moved here. So I'm used to having a David here all day. It's going to be very odd when it's just me in the apartment all, uh... All right, I think I got at the right angle. All, my, me in the apartment all day, I was saying. So I think I got the right angle. Looking at this, looking at how I want to go looking at where that is i think i actually might need to go a little flatter i'm just this is really just eyeballing it trying to eyeball it and get it close all right i'm gonna try that i think i'm gonna try to go for it all right one more time let's look at it in the mini kind of watch where my little hole is up there rotate rotate it out kind of eyeball yeah, I think so. I think it's okay. All right. I'm going to try to hit the top of this with my knife. And I'm going to use my knife just to create a tiny little divot. And this is where the flat surface comes in very nicely. My knife isn't going to skid off of it. Now I've got to judge my angle. So I have to put my drill bit in there. And I've got to kind of think about what my angle is going to be when I tilt, when I go... And here I'm going to compare it one more time. I really don't want to be too far off. I don't want to have to do it again. So if I want it to fit out like that and I've got it going up and in. All right, I think I'm good. We're going to we're going to just go for it. We're going to go for it. I'm going to end up like doing that, I think. All right, so we're going to kind of use our gut. And one thing you can do, by the way, is you can go straight into the arm for the first like half a millimeter just to get a hole established. And then you can slowly turn your drill and put a little bit of pressure on it so that you're more at an angle. I'm going to shift it now. But going straight in for that first tiny little bit, again, helps to set your drill. Now I'm just going in probably, I think it's about a millimeter. Let me check my depth here. Oh, it might have skid. Might have skidded. That is the problem. Let me see where are we. Eh, I did go down a bit. Hmm. I'm actually gonna try to um, do something. I'm gonna grab a bit of wire. I'm gonna kind of glue it because I can break it off, right? So I'm gonna glue it in there just to see what my angle is like and see if that's where I want to go. So it's such a persnickety process. 
We just like dogs. Yes, dogs are distracting. For sure. Kiri says, I am very distracting, but mommy loves me anyway. Right? Happy girl? You just are happy that you're in here now. And not barred out. All right. So I am actually going to super glue this, but I'm going to just use a tiny bit of glue. And it'll be easy to break off after. I want to super glue it because so I, I kind of want to see what my uh, angle is, if it's really what I want. I really don't want to have to do this twice. And if I mess it up, well, we'll be doing it twice. So let's uh, let's hope. Do, 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 do. All right. Let's see what I got. Come on. Ah! <laughs> Huge glob of glue comes out. Anne's like, I'm going to use a tiny bit of glue. Oops. This is so typical. But that's all right. All right. Now I need my happy little tweezer things. Hey, tweezer things. This is probably really long, but that's okay. Ah! Trying to get a hold of this is really difficult, though. Let's see here. Let's see if I can get this to kind of sit. Ah! This is going to be the comedy of errors as Anne tries to do really fine work when she's like super sleepy from overnapping. Oh, the other thing I loved about Luca's, uh, Luca's stream is he's like, oh, 11 p.m., this isn't late at all. And I'm like, snooze. I'm such, such a early bird, uh, early night person. Like, 11 is like bedtime. <laughs> I should I should already be like on my way to bed. And I may not have a deep enough socket for this to work. I really wanted to trial this, but I do not know if I'm going to be able to. Let's see. Maybe I can hold it in place. But it is definitely fighting me. And it's definitely in kind of a wrong position, too. Yeah, the more I look at it, the more I'm like, hmm... I think that I need a, a deeper drill, a deeper drilled hole on this arm. So, all right, so I'm going to look at it again and see how I've screwed it up, if I've screwed it up. All right, there we go. We're going up. We're going in. We're going to turn it. We're going out like that. I'm going to, you know what? Heck, like, heck with this. I'm just going to trim this. I know I want it out. I know I want it gone. So I'm going to trim this section off of the arm, this little nub here to make it easier for me to rotate it. There is only so much you can do before you start cutting bits off. It's just that kind of day, guys. We're just going to cut. Yeah, then you risk gluing it to yourself. Exactly. That would indeed be par for the day. I don't know why lately I've just been... My sleep... I've been sleep challenged for like the last week and a half. I do not get it. Normally I am a good sleeper, or at least a relatively good one. All right, so cutting that little nubbin off actually lets me seat the arm out a little bit. Um, so that's good. So that lets me rotate it out instead of putting it across. Or, normally, remember, it goes like that. But now I, now I can rotate it a little better in the socket and not lose the armor quite as badly. So, But now I'm questioning, like, really... Do I want that angle or do I want a little bit more? So I'm going to I'm gonna actually flatten out a little bit of what I've done. Because I think that the angle that I chose originally was not an optimal angle. So I'm just going to file off that little uh, indent. And remember, it doesn't really matter if we lose this, uh, this little socket, the little nubbin that goes into the socket, because we're pinning it. So we're already going to be putting more support in there than this little ball and socket would give it. So it doesn't matter as much. Do do do. Flatten out the top. Er erase previous problem. There. All right. Now, now that I've got that, and I've got that, the better way to do this would probably have been to. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Would probably have been to put the the pin in here first, but I didn't know if that was going to work for me. Yeah, nail polish remover. Uh, nothing, Gurgi. I've actually been uh, messing around because this is a really rough... I decided I had to pin this arm to really see where I wanted the shield to go because uh, I realized her, her arm was more across her chest than I wanted it to be. Uh, so naturally, she'd be doing this. But then the shield would be like, really, it would get in the way of her leg. It would get away with, you know, it would get in the way a lot. So what I decided I wanted to do was rotate the arm outward 
And to do that, I'm definitely going to have to pin it and I might have to re-sculpt part of it. But I want the arm out so she's more like blocking with her shield toward her back and then, you know, pointing her, promising she's going to decapitate somebody on the right. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're, that's where we're at. And so I, I dry tested a pin, decided it was at the wrong angle, sliced off part of the, uh, the armor arm protrusion here to make it all work a little better. And now we're about to repin. That is all you missed. Oh, forgot. I need my knife. Forgot I need my knife. Hello. Hello. All right. Let's see here. Let's just go in the kind of the middle of things now. Cause I think that since we sliced off part of the arm there, we're a little bit better. So remember, use your, use your scalpel blade, take a firm grip on your arm and just spin your blade a bit. Give yourself a nice divot in the metal to, to drill into. And I do this for plastic minis and resin minis. If I'm pinning, um, yeah, she is a, I mean, she is a really nice sculpt. And hey, David wrote down, remember guys, David wrote down the uh, name of the sculptor and everything. So somewhere around here, I even have it, if I can find it. <laughs> I did keep it, I swear, but I also have slept since then and I'm not sure where I put it. Um, but I do remember that his name is Freeman and his first name is uh, Joaquin, so J-O-A-Q-U-I-N. And somewhere around here, there's a sticky note with all of the pertinent information. But right now I have hobbying stuff spread over my uh, area. So I will have to figure out later where I put that. So we're going to drill right in. We want to go down about a millimeter so that we can seat a pin and see if we're on target. Maybe, maybe, uh, yeah, at this point, because once you commit more than a millimeter, you're really committed. If you're a millimeter in, you have enough usually to hold a pin in place gently so that you can eyeball things. Um, if you go any deeper, then you're committed to that angle. So I want just a little bit of a shallow. Hmm, it does not want to. I may, there might be uh, metal threads in there if it doesn't want to stick. Yeah, there we are. That's a little bit better. It is really shallow. Yeah, there we go. All right. So let's see, that's a very long pin. I think that's going to be the right angle. Looking at that and how I want it to go. I've got it socketed into the, what I'm looking at now is just the angle. So I'm like, if I just went straight in and straight up with this, would this socket correctly? And I think, I think we're going to have to shave off more of this inner arm here. But I think it will socket correctly once I get it up there. I think if I shave a little bit of that off, this is actually the right angle. And I think it'll be about right. I probably am going to have to shave off a little bit of this upper cuff on this armor as well. Um, hey, Gridlock. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying for affiliate. Um, I need uh, two more days and about... I think we're over 400... With this stream, we'll be over 400 hours of the 500 we need, and we'll be at five shows of the six of the seven shows we need. So next week, we'll get it for sure. Assuming Twitch is on time when they send their email. So yeah, so getting my dry run, I'm just imagining, putting that up there. I think we're okay. We're going to go for it. So I think we've got, I think we've got the right angle. So we're going to continue then to drill down at the same angle that we originally did. We are committing now. We are committing to doing it this way. Because when your pin, when your hole is still pretty shallow, you can kind of tilt your pin vise a little bit here or there to try to adjust an angle. Or you can uh, bend the pin just slightly to make it fit a little better. Um, and that's something we could still do if we had to. We could bend the pin just a little bit. But you don't want to bend it too far. You're going to um, definitely make it more liable to break, more fragile. And the last thing we want after doing all this work is fragile join. We want to be able to put this sucker together and putty it and have it be indestructible or as close to as we can with a big heavy model. I've got a lot of little metal threads coming out of the hole here. So I'm kind of re wiggling my uh, pin vise in there, my drill bit to clear those out. Yeah, there we go. Alrighty. There, there. There, there, there. All right, so let's try that. And I'm going to stick this in there, and I'm going to trim it down this time, I think. 
there. All right, so my wire has a pretty nice deep seat in it now. I'm gonna cut off a length of it just so that we can start getting an idea. Where's my clippers? Clippers. And I always use brass rods so I can use just regular hobby clippers and I don't have to go for the heavy duty nail cutters. I don't so much mind wasting a little bits of brass because I've got, you know, a mile of this stuff. <laughs> so so my beady, my beading wire is gonna last me for a very long time of pinning. Um, Especially since so many 3D rendered models are so well um, socketed anyway that you really don't need to pin them. All right, so let's get that in there. All right, now I'm again, I'm reassessing. I'm looking at the angle I think I want. I want the arm out, remember, not across her chest. Normally it would be more like that, and I don't want that. I want it out here. I want it going up. If I have it out far enough, now I can grab my shield, kind of hold it up. And this is actually a good angle, and you know why? Because if you look at it, see how this is a really flat plane right here. From the back of her arm up that shoulder is actually a pretty good straight line. Even if I make this come out a little more, it's, it's perfect, where it's all in a straight line. And that's great, because it means the shield is going to successfully sit right over that shoulder pad very nicely up against the arm. In fact, I could even pin it twice. I could even probably pin it to the shoulder pad. What that means though, is that uh, I'll have to definitely paint that stuff under there before I attach this arm, but that's fine. That's why we're doing a pin so that we can just dry fit it. We're doing all this. We're gonna essentially do the um, sculpting of like the leather straps on top of the, sh or on, you know, we're gonna do the, we're gonna clean this up and sculpt over that hole in the middle. And we're gonna add like a strap over her arm so that we can uh, make it work. So kind of like that. I want it to be kind of like that. And I like that a lot because then I've got room to freehand like some wood grain maybe on the inside of the shield. I don't so much mind if I'm just gonna be straight out um, puttying this arm onto the shield uh, because you know it's, it's fine. It's, it's less armor I have to paint on the outer. I mean, I guess I lose some of this nice armor then and I might have to shave that plate down a little bit to make it go a little flatter against the shield. Um, that actually, that looks pretty good. And I, sh I still should be able to put the horse's reins in that hand and have them show. Um, thank you for the follow, Gallifier. Awesome. Welcome. Hey, oh, did, did we get a raid? Yes, we did get a raid. Thank you, Reaper Miniatures. So, uh, hi everybody. I'm Ann. Normally I do Reaper stream in the, uh, uh central, uh, 1130 AM central is when I normally stream on Reaper's channel. Um, but lately I've been doing my own channel to try to get Twitch affiliate. Thank you, Hordista. Thank you. Thank you. Whoever I missed in the middle. <laughs> I'm also brand new to this, like super brand new. Like I have never streamed like by myself before. So my alerts are very silly. Um, and I sometimes forget to look at them. <laughs> Dubai, Dubai, uh, Dubai, a J, Dubai, a J. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, I'm Anne. Um, hi, Planner. Um, and you thought you had followed before. Well, now you definitely have fired. Nomazik is now following. Maybe it, maybe it tells me whenever you follow, even if you like refollow. Um, but yeah, so here we are. I was just talking about pinning stuff. Um, as you know, we're working on this gigantic model and I'm trying to see that I've got everybody. Hey, Balrog. Hey, Orion. Yeah, I've got this somewhere. Hey, Korhax, thank you for the follow. Thank you, thank you. Yes, if I miss anybody, it's because I don't have follows set up to show like in my chat. Um, Ozzy, thank you for the follow. Thank you, thank you guys. Yeah, so yeah, so we're trying, I'm trying to be a, a real Twitch streamer <laughs> to get affiliate um, so that I can uh, do my own thing. Hey, Graymail, thank you, thank you. Hey, Zambies, how's it going? Yeah, I'm over here. I'm trying to be real. <laughs> I'm trying to be, I'm like Pinocchio, I'm trying to be a real Twitch streamer. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so, uh, hey, MG Photo, thank you so much for the follow. So yeah, I am, uh, trying hard to, uh, get this so that we can be an affiliate and be real. And then, yeah, I would probably use this a lot for my patrons on my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash painting big. Reaper Miniatures, you finally followed me. It took you long enough. <laughs> Hi, Justin. <laughs> ah, this is a very, very, yeah, yeah, it's brand new, Orion. Um, hey, Biffas, thank you. Yeah, I totally called him out. <laughs> it's because he raided me the other day, but he forgot to follow. Yes, yeah, so the zombie in the top corner is called George. Um, Varl, thank you. Thank you for the follow. Awesome. Awesome. 
Also, that armor ain't real. <laughs> but yes, so... Hi, Sean Allen. Thank you. Thank you for the follow. Oh, the, I pretty much have to stop. Now I understand. Now I understand how people feel when Reaper raids them. Because they stop and they don't get any work done for five minutes <laughs> while everybody follows them. <laughs> so, yay, Orion. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, oh, yeah. Take the raid out of the link or refresh the stream to count as a proper view. Thank you. Yes, I do need views. Actual views. I think I think you only need three for affiliate, though, so I think we're good. <laughs> Shooting to the stars! Yay! Like a pink Meldra car? Whoa. Um, yes, yes. I thought George was a good name. Hey, I'm Grunig. Thank you for the follow. Yes, I like George as a name. It's easy for me to remember because, you know, I just think it, I, I use mnemonics sometimes, like devices, and, and so. Jenkin, thank you for the follow. George uh, is like George Washington, first president, and this is my first stream stream thing ever, like first time really trying to do this, and so it's easy for me to remember George. And itch, itch a been wow, that's a name. <laughs> itch, itch a kind bein, itch a boy, I'm bad, I'm terrible. You can tell I didn't take like German ever, if that was Germanish. The ein made it look German. But your name is awesome. I just can't pronounce it. Like, this is why people come to ReaperCon and watch me do the award ceremony. Because when names come up, I butcher them. Like, there's always somebody. And lately, they've get gone to tormenting me. Where they try to make really, really hard to say names. <laughs> so that I have to stop and cock my head to one side and go... <laughs> when I'm trying so hard to keep the, the uh, award ceremony moving. Because we've got like a thousand models or something. Um, thanks everybody. But yes, this is the comedy of Anne totally mispronouncing your name. <sighs> yeah, well, I just started Core Hacks. I just, just, just started. What happened, um, was that Justin had something come up two weeks ago on Thursday. And so my stream, he canceled it at the last minute. So I'm like, well, you know, I'm up, I'm ready. So I may as well stream on my channel. So I just went over and, and tried to stream on, on my channel, which was our first stream. Uh, and then I was like, well, I only need seven streams to get affiliate. And at this point, I'm, I should just keep it up, right? So I'm pretty much streaming on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Um, I try to time my streams to be like after another stream. So like on Tuesdays after Crow's Nest. And if, uh, um, if, um, if we, if Miniature's Den, uh, come, if Luca wants to do, you know, it makes the Reaper thing on Wednesday into a regular, sounds like it's going to be a regular thing. I probably will go after his stream. Um, to make sure I don't like to ever piggyback too much on Reaper streams. Cause I want, I want you guys to be watching Reaper streams too. Cause you know, Reaper, Reaper's doing well on streaming, but it needs to continue to do well on streaming. So the bosses continue to let us do it. <laughs> Justin fought very hard, uh, for a long time, uh, to get Reaper to establish a Twitch presence. Um, and so what keeps that going is you guys dedication and excitement about the channel. So I definitely never want to take viewers away from Reaper. Hey, all right, let's see. Oh, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you for the Patreon link. Patreon.com slash painting big, just like the dragon on the screen. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Ica, I don't even know. Ica, Ica, I think you're just going to be Ica. That sounds so sad. Eating or farting shrimp? Well, if so, um, I don't envy your roommates farting shrimp. <laughs> I can take fart jokes, though, with the best of them because I have Crohn's, so... When you have an intestinal disorder, fart jokes no longer phase you. Um, oh, I don't think views later count, Orion Noir. It's, it's a current one, because Twitch doesn't care so much about VODs. Uh, it cares about current viewers. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't know, Jetta Rose. I did think about offering to do a virtual award ceremony for the painting contest, but I don't know if they're going to take it, take me up on it. I, I actually have to email Adrian uh, and see... If it might be, it might just be too much. Who knows? Um, let's see here. Yeah, that's why I thought planner. They don't. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if you can't watch it, I leave it up for the views. That's sure. Um, yeah, Twitch presence reengaged you in the Reaper projects. Well, good, good, Orion. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. So, all right, so here we are. So what I've been doing, for those of you who are new, which is many of you, um, and thank you, by the way, for everybody refreshing and going, I see I've got 104 viewers now live. That's all, I think that's a new record. I've never been over 100 before. Thank you. So, okay, first I'll introduce you to the mini. Oh, hey, I did find the, 
I see, this is why. <laughs> I have no brain cells, guys. Where's that sticky note with the sculptor's name on it? Oh, right on top of the box for the model. Um, so that's the sculptor for this. And it is a Andrea Warlord Saga model. It's actually quite old. It's a, it's a metal slug, and she is... Here, let me get this uh, zoomed out. Normally, I have it zoomed in. So it's Zorabeth that I'm working on. I just... I don't know what... Well, what, what made me get her out the other day is that she's sculpted by, by uh, Joaquin. And uh, David is also working on a model. My boyfriend. Uh, Walking Harder. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good name. Uh, thank you for the follow. But uh, he started working on a model sculpted by the same sculptor, and it was a big mounted model. He showed it a bit yesterday. Uh, it's a big, like, dinosaur dragon. Sky Daddy! Hey! Hi! Awesome! I'm really glad that you're following. Thank you! I love your body art. I love it. I love it when we raid you. It's so awesome. I always tell people to look at your highlights, especially, like, on face and on the, the uh, collarbone region and the shoulders, because it's exactly like we paint miniatures, right? So this is the model we're working on. She's 54 millimeter, which means she is a giant slug of metal. And though she's on a horse, she has a big old war horse, which is really cool. Uh, yesterday I was working actually on sculpting um, some of the hair on the horse's tail, filling some gaps. Uh, today we are working on, oh, and for those of you who did see yesterday, I actually did come up and fill the gaps on the ears with the last of my green stuff. So I sculpted some more hair up there, but I wanted the tail to look a little more swoopy back here. So I, I wanted that shape. Um, but now today what we're doing is we're reposing a shield arm. So she's not, she does not come with a shield, but I have, uh, I'm going to paint her as a bit of a dark Valkyrie and I want her to be like, I want a dead guy casualty model on the base and I've got one and he had a shield and I'm not going to use it because he's dead and because it used to be, it was meant to be on his back. So I thought I would take his shield and give it to her. Um, but to do that, I realized when I was looking at it today, cause her arm normally is way across her chest. And so to do that, I need to repose the arm. And so we're, what we're doing then is we're pinning it. We're using a bit of brass rod uh, to repin it. Oh, thanks, Sky Daddy. Uh, I am not a sculptor. I am a painter. Hey, wait, let me show you what I do. So Sky Daddy, let's see here. I was Reaper staff painter for a long time. So let me get closer and let me zoom in and get... Well, she's pretty close, actually. She's pretty close. So this is a wraith that I did last time but yeah i'm not a reaper staff sculptor I'm a, I'm a reaper staff painter so other sculptors do all this stuff but i uh i paint them so i wanted to paint this wraith like she was becoming more corporeal so that's why she's got a living part and then she's energy um out toward the end so yeah and then some other stuff i've been working on this is a project that i was working on uh with one of my uh mentor ease so it's uh samurai um another big big resin bust uh so that one's in progress uh let's see here Nope, nope. Same cam. Same cam, Orion. I do love, yeah, I, I love the face too. Um, there's a strand of hair that comes down here. So that's why there's a dark a shadow there. Although I want to minimize it maybe. I was thinking about repositioning. That's why I took the strand of hair off so I can reposition it a bit. But yeah, this is a, definitely a very limited color study. It's got the red and the indigo. So it's a very interesting piece for me because it departs a bit from my previous uh, stuff. But yeah, so that, and then of course there's Snake Lady that we were working on earlier. So like earlier on the Reaper stream, I was working on Snake Lady and doing some lighting. Um, we're going to continue her tomorrow. And uh, yeah, so I've got a whole bunch of stuff all over. Of course, all over. <laughs> I have stuff everywhere. So yeah, so I paint. Um, I would like to get into the sculpting side. That said, uh, I, I actually created the Reaper paint line, Sky Daddy. Uh, so when I, I worked for Reaper down in... Uh, North Texas for 17 years. And that was my job was uh, to create their paint line and to make it every day. So for 17 years, I, uh, I made Reaper's paints. And then uh, I started dating a guy out here in California. And one thing led to another. He also is a, is a top notch miniature painter. Um, so I moved out here to be with him uh, this spring. Uh, so Reaper was really sad to see me go, but I'm still doing their streaming for them every morning at 1130 AM central. So it's, it's actually worked out wonderfully. Um, it's, it makes me happy because Reaper has been so good to me over the years. Like they really, I, I wouldn't have worked for them for 17 years if they were not a good, great company to work for. Let's just put it that way. So yeah. Um, Ramir, yeah. The free hands cool. Do I have another? Yeah. I'll hear, let me get elf guy. So this is an elf bus from Hera models, but the tattoo on the chest is freehand. So, so yeah. So there you go. Thanks Gallo. Yeah, I mean, it's going great. I've been, uh, he drove down to Arizona to meet me halfway when uh, I drove out here um, with my, tossed my dog in the car and my worldly belongings. Um, 
So now I am living out here and I do like it. Although I think that California absolutely cheats after living in Texas for uh, 17 years with a hundred and you know, five degrees in the summer. The fact that every day here is like 75 to 85 degrees and sunny is ridiculous. Like where did they get off getting this? Why, do, how does California get to steal all of the good weather? Like this is totally not fair. I will, I will. And I grew up in Wisconsin. Let's not talk about the winter there. So coming from horrible winters and horrible summers, most of my life, I can say that California cheats. That's it. And I was born here, so I can say that. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, I gained for the West Coast. I hope so. <laughs> I can't complain too much because I do love taking my walks and it's a beautiful, beautiful temperature in the evening here. But, uh, but yeah, so he, this is what we're doing. We're reposing this and then I want to essentially uh, sculpt a strap over the arm to, to have her holding the shield. And the reason that I wanted to do this at all, not that it's not a great sculpt by itself. So if you put her on the, on the uh, horse here, and let's zoom out a bit. Yeah, there we go. All right. So the thing is though, that the focal point on this model is really focused here. Like this is its best angle for sure, right? With the horse, the action and her and her sword coming out. This is its best viewing angle is what we would say. But then if you turn it, it's not as good of a, it's not as exciting, right? It's, I oh, know her arm fell off. Ah, now it's really not as exciting. Well, unless you count armless chicks as exciting. Um, but you can see, right? There's not a lot. There's not as much because she's turned away here. So it's not as visually engaging. So if I can put a shield here, that lets me paint some freehand designs on the shield and make it more interesting on the back side of the model. And that's why I'm very much into doing this conversion, even though it might turn out to be a bit of a pain, is that I wanted to make sure that there was something visually interesting on the model. And the reason is that if I'm painting this for me, I'm painting it to a competition level standard, which means it probably will get entered in a competition at some point. And one of the things I think about when I'm doing that is I'm looking at the model from all angles and making sure that it's interesting. So on the back side here with the cloth, I can probably do some freehand back here. She's also got some wings that come out of her, uh, her armor, armor wings that come out in the back uh, that I was thinking about making bigger to also make a bit more interesting and making give me, give me a bit more room for freehand up there. Uh, so I'm always thinking about, is it is it interesting from every angle? Not just in the composition of the sculpt, but in the visually, you know, in the paint job. Can I make it interesting? So, uh, oh my gosh. But I hate wings, Nomad Zeke. <laughs> This is the great irony. I hate painting wings. I've painted so many dragon wings and so many succubus wings and so many just wing wings all of my life. And yet, and yet I still can't wait to paint Julie Guthrie's little sphinx. As she's sitting up top, guys. She will appear on a Reaper stream at some point, even though there are gigantic wings here that are going to vex me mightily. Um, I am nonetheless. She only has one wing pegged down right now because the other one doesn't stick very well right in the socket. So yeah. Um, I mean, I guess I could steal the Sphinx wings, but, the, but the thing is she, uh, I mean, actually the Sphinx wings are in scale guys. Make a note. Uh, the Sphinx wings are about 54 millimeter. Hmm. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not even going to think about it. <laughs> I need another Sphinx, <laughs> but those wings are not nearly big enough for the horse. Um, but yeah, given the choice, I mean, most of the time Valkyries are done with the winged horse and the maidens themselves don't have wings, but I decided to kind of invert it this time. Uh, I just, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and clip. <laughs> yes. Feather for me. Well, don't worry. We'll, we will start on that little Sphinx at some point on uh, Nomad Zeke on the Reaper stream in the mornings. So excellent. Let's see. What do we got? We got, okay. So it's been about an hour. All right. I really need to get this pegged in and get it to where I can actually think about it. Now, when I was originally looking at this, I did think I was going to have to shave off some more metal to make this socket right. Cause it's going to hit her rib cage, um, as it stands. I think I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue to, uh, drill in and clip down. I think I need yeah, my, my pin isn't quite set in enough. It's a little wobbly. So I'm going to drill a little bit deeper into the arm here. I needed it to be drilled deep enough so I could set the pin in and make sure I had the right angle, right? So this is using a pin vise. For those of you new to the hobby, you usually with plastic or uh, resin models, you don't have to pin. But with metal, it's uh, it's very, it's, it's a really good feature. Um, 
because uh, usually if you're working with heavy pieces, uh, it gives it a little bit more stability. And you're really just using a little tiny hand drill to drill in there. And then you're using a little bit of brass rod or aluminum rod. Um, some people use paper clips. I don't because I don't, uh, don't want to air and uh, ruin a set of clippers by uh, using them on spring steel. Uh, most hobby clippers are not rated for spring steel and it may actually shear and shatter if you use them on it. Um, I have seen it, ha I've seen it happen once and heard of it happening an additional time. So I know it's not just me on that whole shearing thing. All right. So I think that's probably good. I'm going to put some glue down. Ah, you want just a little glue. Ideally, uh, you don't need it everywhere. If it does go everywhere, like it tends to, I usually will take a little bit because I don't want to glue it into the socket yet. I just want to glue the pin into it because I want to be able to, to add and remove this arm because I've got a lot to do with it. I'm really just testing fit right now, but I'm going to want to paint this arm separately for sure. And that's another thing with models. Uh, the question that you hear, you know, is when do you, when do you decide to attach stuff and when do you leave it separate? Let me just tap this in make sure that I've got a nice seat on it. Yep. It's really solid in there. That's great. It's not wiggling at all. Fantastic. Uh, the answer really is that uh, whenever something blocks something off, off, like if I if I tried to to glue this all together and paint it, I would have a really hard time reaching like say the inside of the shield. Once I had it all set up, um, it would cover the shield itself would cover the shoulder and the hip. So it would be really a pain in the butt. So what happens then is that I'm going to end up sculpting the shield attached to the arm and I'm going to end up painting the shield and arm completely separately and painting her and then putting the shield on. Now I, I will keep in mind that I don't have to finish full finish the areas underneath the shield, but I do want to have paint there um, at least one level of highlighting and shading probably, um, and dark, sh dark shading right under the shield. So, all right. So looking at that now, what I've done is her arm has actually gone up a bit. So it's, uh, that's okay because she's still holding the reins of the horse in her hand. I've got, I haven't attached those yet. They're still a separate small piece. Uh, more than anything, I wanted to position the arm before I started mucking with that. So now what I want is I really want to see the angle here and what I want is to, when I look down this angle, I want a pretty much straight line all over this area there. So this is the angle the shield's gonna fit on and that's why I wanna make sure that this is the correct angle. I want the shield to fit flat and pretty much go nicely across that shoulder pad right there when I've got it, uh, when I've got it attached. So if I've got it there, that makes a nice angle. There's still enough room to see things. I've got enough room to work. Um, and enough room to like, you know, do freehand on the inside of the shield and everything. So that's good. That's a good angle. I think, uh, I think actually we do have a really good angle. So with that, I'm going to take the final trim on this wire and snip it down. Yeah, I did do feathered wings in a very easy way. Um, like the spirit beast wings, I actually have spirit beast around here somewhere. Where are you spirit beast? Uh, you're hiding over here because I haven't finished you yet. Hey, thank you, Miniatures. Oh, Miniatures. Hey, Luca. <laughs> I just saw you. <laughs> I was just telling people that I liked your style. Um, I like your, uh, you're pretty laid back. You're pretty chill. It's uh, pretty awesome. All right. So, so, okay, guys, this is, these are some of the wings that I did. I did these on stream. This is the spirit beast. It's a Reaper model. Um, I sculpted some water on the base and we did cool water effects. So if you go back on Reaper's, um, Twitch and you look at uh, VODs or actually you might have to go to YouTube at this point because it might be too long ago but uh, we actually sculpted I sculpted the water on stream and I showed people how I sculpted it and how I did the water effects so but anyway Spirit Beast um, this is the fastest way to do wings I think which is with glazes building up glazes yeah no problem it's good it's good to have you Luca uh, doing stuff for Reaper because I think it's if you you appeal more to a, a, mini, a, a European miniature space uh, that would be great like I always think that that, uh, you know, Europe really has a distinct like style of painting and that you think of things a little bit different. Um, you're much braver with your highlights and shadows. Uh, a lot of the painters over there are, and I think it's good. It's good to have that crossover. I'm all for like different styles, uh, in mini painting. I don't like it when people all like, like focus in on one thing. I, I like seeing different ways of doing things. All right. Have fun. Nomad Zeke. Yeah, I'm not going to be on for that much longer. I just wanted to actually get this arm repositioned. Yeah, old Andrea um, Warlord Saga model today, um, Luca. Oh, the one, the gigantic horse and uh, everything. So I've been doing a lot of green work, let me put it that way. These are 
Fun part of it. Yeah, seeing the variety, yep. And picking what you like and making your own. Exactly. Um, I had a question on my last AMA that I did for Reaper uh, about uh, how to develop a style, like how to develop your own miniature style. And really what I suggested was to uh, pick some people whose style you really liked and find a model that they painted by them that you could get a really good picture of and then uh, try to duplicate what they'd done. And do it not just with one painter, but with a couple of different ones. Because that'll let you try to figure out like aspects of their style that you like and try to, uh, to emulate it. And you'll learn a lot, and it will also probably give you more tools in your toolbox and enable you to come to uh, a style having tried a lot of different things. Oh, lots of gap-filling miniatures, Dan. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Um, the entire stomach. Uh, we puttied the entire stomach and all, of course, because it's a big metal horse, right? You're going to get, it's two halves. And then all the neck. Uh, and then I had to do there. And there were some mold lines. I had to re-sculpt some hair and fill that. And I'm still working on the backside. And then I had to fix the the, <laughs> the vents. Uh, yeah, there was a bit of green. <laughs> it's almost it's almost oh what do you what do you got we have two few two few you wanted to this model is an andrea warlord saga 40 uh 54 millimeter whoa 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 we went too close there we go she is awesome but i am painting her as a dark valkyrie instead of an angelic paladin uh so i'll probably do a dark dapple gray on the horse and do her armor like in a lot of like blacks maybe with i think i might keep the blue green shift and maybe do some like iridescent -y kind of stuff i don't know but i definitely like raven feathers I don't know. I'm still kicking it around in my mind. Was this model has so much prep and fill work that uh, I've got all the time in the world to think about well how I'm going to paint it before I actually paint it. The one thing I do know is that I'm going to do a very dramatic lighting effect. Uh, I used her as a model for for skin tones the other day, which is why she's partially painted. But I'm actually going to prime over that. And what I really want is a really strong light sourcing falling on her and on the horse's like head and chest, um, and uh, really just like a spotlight from from the heavens since I want her as a Valkyrie. Uh, so that sort of thing is it's all I've really planned out in my head, but I want her holding a shield. And so I grabbed a 54 millimeter shield off of another Viking model that I had. I think, uh, actually I'm, I'm crossing the genres because this one is from Romeo models instead of Andrea. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty much repositioning the arm that used to hold the reins and it's still going to hold the reins, but I also want it to go out and up more and, uh, have the shield on it. So that I've got a visual interest, a point of visual interest I can do some freehand on, on the other side of the model. Since she's so interesting from this vantage point, but she's really not that interesting from this vantage point. But adding a shield with freehand with Viking uh, not working stuff on it will definitely help with that. So, all right. So we've been pretty much dry fitting this since we had to change the position of the arm and carve off some metal uh, from the sculpt to make it work. Oh, yeah. Oh, about the other one, the flying deer. Oh, yeah, it's um here. I even have the item number, I think. Hold on, let me grab it. Mm, Spirit Beast from Reaper. Spirit Beast. I did Spirit Beast. The base work is my own, but uh, Spirit Beast. Let me get it. I'll even have the, yes, here is the number for you even. Spirit Beast, sculpted by Julie Guthrie, because Julie does the best model animals. Uh, and then there he is in his glory. He comes on the rock, but he does not come with the water. I just decided I wanted to put him in the middle of the river because I wanted this cool color scheme. But that's the item number. So you can get Spirit Beast. He's uh, got a sticky note wrapped around his card right now with all the list of stuff I have to do to finish him. He's living over on my shelf right now. There we are. There we are. There we are. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I absolutely, uh, I love, to I love cool minis of all types. So I am always, uh, try to answer your question about where you can get, how you can fuel your figmentia, as David put it earlier. We were talking about how one of my discord channels really needs to become enablement <laughs> instead of supply stock. Uh, because we are always enabling each other by, uh, saying, Hey, look at this cool model. Hey, this new Kickstarter started up. All right, so let's take our snippers and snip off that wire and finally get this arm kind of pegged in and see what we need to alter. I'm going to trim off about half of it. And this is the length you usually want your pinning wire. Maybe even you can even go a little shorter than that. Depends on how heavy the model is, how big the model is, uh, as far as the length of your pins. Obviously, you can't pin into metal too far, or you're at least not with small bits, uh, drill bits, because you're going to... Uh, be at risk of breaking off the tip of your drill bit if you go in too, too much. But here I've got what I wanted, right? I wanted to be able to draw a line straight up so that the shield will sit flat here. And it's a good pose. 
Oop, it's a good pose if her arm ever stays in, but I will not. I should use some sticky tack, but I had a sticky tack accident earlier. So now I am wary of sticky tack. Um, so let's just position this correctly toward the back. So it's like up like this. And then I got to kind of look at from this angle. Yeah, I think that's going to be good. I think that's going to be a good, good shield angle. Yeah, that'll be good. I mean, it covers up a lot of this, but it, this isn't that interesting to begin with. So, yes, I think so. I think I, I think that's where I'm going, guys. I think I think we're going to go with the freehand direction. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the yes. Oh, miniature is done. That kicks the Camelot. Yeah, Equus of Camelot or whatever it was. David and I ran for it. We totally knew we were going to. I love the Merlin and the uh, the Mor Morgana. Yeah. I was, I was sold on, on Morgana. Uh, and, uh, then Merlin was awesome too. And, uh, David likes totally different models in there than I do, but we went in together on it and we'll probably end up popping another, another one of theirs. Oh, wow. Oh, Galahad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I was thinking about Galahad. I keep thinking about it, but I'm already doing a massive horse. <laughs> Am I really going to have enough oomph to do another massive horse after this massive horse? <laughs> But it is, yeah, yeah, it is, it is amazing. Have you seen it in person, Manisha's done? Have you seen, like, anybody get a copy of it or a print? Or is it just, I mean, I looked at the renders and they're really nice. And it's Big Child, right? I mean, I've never gotten a bad model from Big Child. Like, it's all been top quality stuff. Um, but yeah, so I, I guess a lot of people are going to be painting that one for World Expo whenever the next World Expo happens. Speaking of, hey, you're in Italy. Have you heard anything? I assume that World Expo was canceled, the one in the Netherlands, right? You've seen the cast. Oh, okay, you haven't seen the cast. Okay, it's a big child. Yeah, they never they never fail a cast, you're right. That's why I, was, I, I looked at the price tag and went, well, it's going to be a lot, but it's going to be worth it. Um, I was curious about the next World Expo, though, if they had to cancel this one, if they're going to do one next year, maybe, or if it's going to be another three. Have you heard anything? Because David and I were originally planning to come over uh, for over to Europe for the next World Expo. And then we had to cancel, um, obviously, this year. There we are. And we were super sad, too, because I have friends in Netherlands. And so it would have been really cool. But I'll have to keep my, my ears out about the World Expo thing. Because uh, I do want to come over. I want to I want to meet a lot of uh, our European painter friends in person. You've not? Okay, you've talked to... Okay. They're still going to do Monte Sansovino. Really? Unless they get another breakout. All right. Well, that's... A, and that's in... That's in October or November, isn't it? MSS. I haven't... I haven't been over to Europe for ages. I, uh... Yeah, yeah, October. Okay. All right. Yeah, Matt Pietro was trying to get a group of us um, all for... Uh, in Monte Sansovino. No, I've never been to Monte Sansovino, actually. Uh, Jennifer went, and then she may be super jealous that I hadn't gone, so Jennifer Haley, uh, my buddy. And uh, we've been trying to make it. My biggest problem now is just that I have Kiri, and she's a very elderly dog, and so I don't want to board her. Uh, so it's like, uh, do I want to go this year? I don't know how I'm going to find a caregiver for her, because she's definitely got her idiosyncrasies. She's 12 and a half years old. She's a big dog. So... That's our only like bar probably this year. Um, and so we might have to wait till Monte Sansovino next year. Yeah, that's what that's what everybody's been saying. Whenever I talk to people at Adepticon or anything, they say Monte Sansovino is the is the show to go to. So thank you for the recommend. Oh, yeah, Reigns. Sorry, sorry. Um, somebody asked an actual question. Thank you, Jenna Rose, for fielding that. Uh, you're not worried about the saddle rope thing. <laughs> saddle rope thing not fitting um the reins should still oh the like the saddle are we talking about like she should fit hold on let me let me peg it together guys let me peg it together so if the arm is up like this i should still be able to put the reins the reins come out of the bottom of her hand so there should not be a fight, I should be able to still, even if I have to have them hang down more, which they would actually physically, since I'm changing the position of the arm, I have to think of where the reins will go. Ah, um, but I think it'll work. I think it'll all work. I think the reins will just end up being up against the bottom, the inside of the shield. Um, that's, that's the thing. <laughs> super chill and super competitive. Sounds like a European miniature show. 
Okay. Yeah, if what you care about is the community, you get to meet the best painters in a friendly environment. Well, that's cool. Luca says we have to go to Monte San Savino, David. We do. Yes. I, I'm aware of this. Okay. David is aware of it. That means we'll make it happen. So my boyfriend is David Diamondstone. He also uh, is a world-class, I'd say, miniatures painter. A very excellent miniatures painter. Magic Pietro was supposedly organizing a group from... Yeah, he said... Uh, Lucas US. Lucas says it's on for this year. They're, unless they have another... Really? Unless they have another outbreak, they're going to try to do MSS, yeah. That they're going to try to... The show will wow. go on. Wow. So I don't think we're going this year. No, no, a little too risky. All right. I could... I, I have a Kiri anyway, so... Um... Oh, David Diamondstone. Yes, uh, lightminiatures.com. L-I-G-H-T miniatures.com. That's David's. And David is David is uh, and is a very excellent painter. He's won. I, he's won crystal brushes. I didn't get to crystal brush fast enough, um, and now it's now it's gone. So I could never win a crystal brush. But. Uh... <laughs> oh, she has paint. Huh? Who? What? What? Oh, are you on my stream? Yeah, but she's not going to keep that paint. Oh. We're totally... I want to do I want to do Zenith on her. Because I want a really, really strong light source. No, I did this so I could use her as a, as a demo for the Patreon to do, um, like, smooth painting smooth skin tones. Because she was bigger, and so it was, uh, it was easier to do I a big metal. I that just now. No, no, no. I've been working on repositioning the hand. I realized that in order to put a shield on it, I had to reposition the whole hand, the whole arm. This project just keeps getting bigger and bigger and more involved. Yes. And I mean, it's a monstrous thing, so it, it should not surprise you that this project is getting bigger and bigger. So it's a good thing it's, I'm doing it on stream. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's really good. Well done, Dave, says, uh, says Luca. <laughs> yes. We are, we are uh, what is it, the mini painting power couple? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, and the sad thing is that we only started dating, like we started dating at an Adepticon. Um, but then COVID came and now we haven't been able to go and go to do the cons together and go to all the competitions, which is kind of a bummer. Yeah. Elthai there is my, uh, my guy is David miniature Sten. Sometimes he unnerves me by watching my stream. He's sitting across from me. <laughs> Sometimes he's like, oh yeah. <laughs> Wait, who's doing CB again? Huh? Who, what? Doing C oh they're doing Crystal Brush again? Where? Oh, or are they doing it like Simon Expo or something? Because I did hear a rumor that they might try to rebrand it and do it in Simon Expo. Or does or did they sell it? Like because they weren't interested. The parent company for Simon was not interested, last I checked, in uh, bringing that competition back. The website hasn't been updated since 2018. Well, you really need to update your website then. You've done so much like awesome stuff since then. Or their website. Their it's website. their website. Okay. Your website's been updated. Yeah. You've heard from a trusted source they're working on redoing it. All right. Uh -huh. So they're going to keep it, huh? So they're they're actually like Simon is going to keep it. Uh, you need an Instagram too, he says. I have an Instagram, but I don't use it very often. <laughs> Hello. What is this? Is this modern? <laughs> modern. <laughs> All right. So we actually have this. At least now I can... Sculpt my shield with impunity. I just have to constantly like check. I'm probably what I'm probably gonna have to do, guys, to make sure this works and that everything fits together. Because you mentioned Liquid Nebula, that I have to make sure the reins fit in the hand, and that is very valid. I like uh, no no question there. So to to make sure, I think I'm probably going to need to putty in the bottom of the shield, and fix all these little nubbins that I cut off, um, and then I'm gonna have to pin the shield onto the arm in the position I want it. Um, and kind of leave it a little loose. And it, just like I did with this, uh, with this fit is keep it a little loose until I can jiggle it around and figure out exactly how it needs to be pinned to make everything work. Um, so it's going to be like this kind of fighting back and forth thing. Uh, and if you go slow with this sort of project, much as this seems intimidating and oh my gosh, how are we going to make this work? But in the end, it'll all come together. But sometimes you just need to go a little bit slower and not try to rush into it, not try to just throw things together. Um, but, but yeah, yeah, I've got an Instagram, but it's, I haven't used it for a little while. Um, when I was moving and everything, and my, my life got eaten. Uh, the, we're moving across country from Texas to California really ate my uh, time for Insta. 
and I wasn't, uh, I wasn't painting a lot because I was packing and moving. So now, now I'm painting. You're right. You're absolutely right. Liquid. I need to get back on Instagram and start putting stuff up again. Cause it is a cool, cool tool. And I always like seeing what other people are working on on there. So it's definitely neat. And I need to need to update that. Thank you for being my conscience, my, my Instagram conscience, right? <laughs> Alrighty. So I'm okay with this. I need to like, I'm going to leave it wiggly um, so that I have room to pose it as I move, work with the shield, but I'm okay with that as is. My next task then is going to be to essentially polish off and, and uh, finish out the back of the shield, take some of these little artifacts from the previous model off of it, uh, file it down or green it down, fill in that little uh, divot in the middle, um, put a, maybe put a plate down there or something in green stuff so that I can pose the arm up against it and figure out what angle I need to have it fit. Uh, cause obviously it needs to, it needs to fit more like with the arm coming out, right? It needs to kind of do like that so that we can actually still plug it into the shoulder. Um, and to do that, then I'm probably going to have to take these reins and make them flop more like around here. Who is following? Ah, Disphemist. Hey, how's it going? welcome um so normally the reins in her hand in her old pose were supposed to be down like this right but it's just a peg so i can totally like switch them a little bit make them if i cut it off or if i'm, I'm probably gonna have to pin these just like i just pinned this arm and that's that's a fun pin right pinning into this tiny little bit of metal but it's perfectly doable um with a bit that i've got so so probably I'll need to pin them in so that they stay. And then I'm going to have to just kind of look at how they're going to have to go to fit correctly up against that shield. And I may have to make them go more like that. Um, we'll see. What's most important is that they're there to suggest uh, the reins. And I may need to... What I want to know is she's holding her reins, but you don't have reins actually to peg into this horse. So or maybe I, they do. I do and I just haven't unearthed them yet. I may actually have reins around here somewhere. At any rate, we'll figure it all out. This is going to be a huge project, as you can see. Um, it's going to absorb many days. <laughs> Every once in a while, we'll probably take a break from it on this stream and do something else um, just for fun. Uh, but I mostly do want to work on like competition level pieces on the stream. Um, I may do a commission, a little bit of... I, I like your thing, Luca, where you use uh, the time on stream to do commissions. That makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, because I do find I'm productive. Other one, I'm not totally distracted answering questions, but I do find that I actually get work done on the stream. Um, so I do have some commissions I need to work on, so that makes a lot of sense to me. All right. Okay, guys. I think it is... Wow. Okay, yep. It's getting on toward uh, 6 o'clock Central. Almost. 20 minutes it'll be. Supper time for many people. Uh, so I probably should call it here and I should work on uh, getting my shield set up for our next stream. Lately I've been doing Tuesdays and Wednesdays uh, so that we can get Twitch affiliate. So it's, uh, it's and it's probably going to end up around the same time either way. Um, like later in the evening, like more 3 p.m. West Coast time, like 4.30, uh, 4.30 to 5 Central time is probably about when I'll start streaming um, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I'm trying to make a nice schedule so that everybody knows when I'm doing it, so that I'm not overlapping with Reaper, um, and that we can still all have fun. Yeah, it really, I bet. Because <laughs> otherwise you get like, so... Hey, Anoraxia, thanks for the follow. Yeah, it, it, it just makes it easier. Like, if I had started puttying this horse on my own, like, not on stream, I would have been just, like, sick of it after 10 minutes. <laughs> But because I was doing it on stream and I had was explaining what I was doing and how the putty was working and how to work with the putty, um, it, it went a lot faster, right? So that was really, uh, I like that. I, li I like Twitch, I think, for big projects for sure. Especially big intimidating projects where you feel like you're never, you're never going to get to the end. <laughs> All right, guys. I will see you then with Ms. Ms. Uh, my project for the weekend will be then to finish out this shield and figure out how to peg this into the hand to make it look right. Um, and then to pretty much get this arm all ready. Then I need to do a last sweep uh, to make sure I haven't missed any mold lines or gap filling or any putty work that I might want to do 
uh, left over on the horse. I'll probably do another light gray primer just to bring that stuff out because the, the real way to find out if your green stuff is good is to prime over it and then any, uh, any chunks or bad parts that aren't smoothed in will be instantly uh, exposed to your view. So uh, after that, we can, we can get into some painting. I'm going to do a big base too. Yeah, you have a great day too, Luca. Have a good night, actually. I guess it's like midnight. Yes, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for helping me get Twitch affiliate. Well, by the end of next week, we should have Twitch affiliate. I can't wait. All right, super. You guys have a great night. Go eat dinner or go to bed or whatever you're doing. Hello, good morning to people in the far side of the world. <laughs> we will see you all next week, and I'll be on Reaper tomorrow at 1130 a.m. Central. All right, have a great one, everybody.